You are listening to the You Are Techie podcast, episode number 110. Welcome to the You Are Techie podcast, where it's all about growing in your techiness so you can find the tech job of your dreams. And now your host, technology learning coach, Ellen Toomey. Hey, moms, are you trying to break into tech? Are you wondering what skills you really need to get hired and how those skills can be worth $45 an hour instead of the $25 an hour you thought when you first started thinking about going back to work? If so, then the Your Techie membership is for you. Our combination of courses, coaching, and community come with the mentor support you need to keep moving forward in your tech career. It's like no other membership program available. We have the exact skills employers are looking for. You'll learn how to maximize your income with portfolio-ready skills that hiring managers are seeking, not to mention the steps you can skip so you don't find yourself down that endless tech learning rabbit hole. Join me as I walk you step-by-step through the getting hired process in tech. Sign up at youartechie.com. That's Y-O-U-A-R-E-T-E-C-H-Y.com. I can't wait to see you in our membership. Hello and welcome to the podcast. Today we're talking about secret weapon interview questions. Now, I used to get super nervous when I was preparing for interviews, but the more I did, the more I kind of liked them. And I know that's not the norm. Most of my students think that interviews are the worst, the least amount of interviews and the shortest amount of time they can spend on them, the better. But I want to convince you, like I convinced them, that interviewing is worth spending time on to get better at. Hopefully you'll get one job and stay there for a long time. I'm actually seeing trends towards that. And my students tend to be of a better age, slightly older than 22. They tend not to be as much of job hoppers as is the current trend. So I actually see like people wanting to stay at places longer. I get that. But sometimes, you know, you get into a company just to return from work or from staying at home with your kids or to break into tech from something else. And it isn't your ideal dream job. It's just a step towards it. I think that it's a lifelong skill that can benefit you and you can actually learn to love interviewing. One of the mistakes that I would make when I was preparing for interviews, and it's so easy to make this mistake, like I still look back and think, yeah, I totally get why you did that. The mistake is to over prepare. So up until like the very last minute where I'd have to leave, I would sometimes be reviewing code. I'm not even kidding. (laughs) At that point, it's not helpful. So A much better way to prepare is to think about, okay, how do I want to communicate my value to the person I'm meeting with and what are their greatest needs? So this comes from, so I'm excited to do this podcast because I know many of you are like, well, what questions should I prepare for? Because it could be anything, right? There could be 101 questions to prepare for. And I don't want you to do that. I am going to give you a few here that I encourage you to write down the ones that really resonate with you and just prepare really good answers for those. But before you kind of dive into prepping for interviewing, which is really, again, a lifelong skill, you can do that at any time. You can do it when you're still thinking about interviewing. You can do it when you're in the throes of it. You can do it even if after you've gotten hired, if you just want to be good at interviewing, you might even interview for an internal job, right? So, but before you do that, I really want you to, before you answer the questions that I'm going to go through today, I really want you to kind of get a flavor for where the person interviewing you is coming from. The ethos for the secret weapon interview questions, none of these are my questions. I'm stealing them from the best people ever, the Your Techie Podcast guests. And so the ethos, the beginning of this is that I decided this question would be fun when I first started the podcast, and I asked my two first lovely lady guests, Shelly Blackburn from Cisco and Margaret Dawson from Red Hat, this question, what are your two favorite secret weapon interview questions? 
I thought, okay, well, they're amazing women. They're both in the top leadership of ridiculously amazing tech companies. So they would have great answers. However, their answers totally blew me away. And I got so excited by their answers. I thought, this is a foundational question that I need to ask nearly every podcast guest because I know those of you listening, I mean, how cool is that? Shelly and Margaret interview people all day long and you get to peek into what that interview would be like at Cisco or what that interview would be like at Red Hat. I mean, that's just so valuable. So I'm going to go over their questions. They really are amazing. But first, I just want to thank them. It's kind of surreal to look back. You know, I'm all nostalgic because we hit this 100 episodes and I'm like, yeah, 100 episodes. And now we're blowing that out of the water. But, you know, when I asked Shelly and Margaret if they would come onto the podcast, there was no podcast. (laughs) There was just hey, will you come on my podcast that's about to become something? And I have to look back. They're so cool and amazing and supportive and just true champions of women and really moms in tech that they did not even hesitate. They're like, oh, yeah, sure. I'll come on the podcast. I haven't launched yet. No problem. (laughs) They just had so much faith in this lady and in this message that I just want to say, Margaret and Shelly, thank you so much. And I hope that those of you listening, that brings you a lot of comfort and encouragement that there are people, women and men out there, who are excited for you to return to the workforce. They're excited for you to break into tech. They want to help you and they give freely of themselves and of their thoughts and ideas. And here they are sharing these concepts with you. So I just think that's a beautiful thing. And I wanted to say thank you to Margaret and Shelly. And let's dive into some questions. So when I asked Shelly, what are your two favorite secret weapon interview questions? Here's what Shelly said. What have you done to change someone's life? Okay, hello. (laughs) We did start off with a bang. I mean, I remember when she said that I almost fell out of my chair. I was like, well, that's not intimidating at all. But truly, I think most of my students have an amazing answer to that. What have you done to change someone's life? And think about it. Shelly goes on to extrapolate and Shelly was episode two. So you can go to youartechie.com slash two. I'm going to name all the episodes in here. It's always just slash and the number of the episodes. You can find it that way if you want to re-listen. But Shelly goes on to say, hey, I don't want to work with you if you aren't someone who can really change someone's life. I want everyone. It kind of takes that concept of team player to a totally different level. So I really, I really love that question. What have you done to change someone's life? And then the other question she asks, and she is not the only guest to, this became a pretty popular question. The question is, why wouldn't I hire you? Why wouldn't I hire you? That is a tough one, I think, but a great question because what it really says is, can you get into my brain? Can you show me empathy? And help me understand what your limitations are and how those could impact my work environment. If you can really set aside your ego and think about that person, then you can answer that honestly and authentically from the place of who you are. I love the term secret sauce. What's your secret sauce? You know, who are you? What can you do? so much that you do it so well that it can become actually annoying if you do it too much. Your families are a great place to find this. My family, I think, would say that mine is feedback. Thanks, Ellen. Thanks, mom. We've had enough feedback. So you might not want to hire me if you're someone who doesn't like feedback. I love feedback. I wish people gave me more feedback, but I give people feedback all the time. It's pretty much what I do all the time. So that would be true for me. So what's true for you? It doesn't have to be something that is a complete negative. It can be this like secret sauce that you have something that really makes you who you are, but can be annoying to those of you who know you the best. I think that'd be a great answer to why wouldn't I hire you? And the other, I guess the other one that my students would probably want to say would be like, well, I'm, you know, I'm new or I have fewer skills than other people. And then you would talk about how your others, you know, your learning and your maturity and these other qualifications that you bring are going to be really stellar. But that's not if it's an entry level position. That would not be true if that was entry level. I think the going with like the secret sauce one is a better way to go because you really want to find if you're a good fit on this team. 
And so letting them know who you are and then you don't have to be someone different when you're in the job. Right. Okay. That was Shelly episode two. And now Margaret Dawson, episode four. And Margaret also has a website, margaretdawson.com. So she really is into empowering and inspiring women. But her question is kind of like almost the total opposite direction. Instead of big picture, it's really specific. What's the last book you downloaded? And the great thing about Margaret is that she doesn't care if you downloaded a book. I have a few books on my Kindle, but I tend to read paper books. And she said, it doesn't matter if they read on Kindle or not, if they, you know, as long as there's a book that they've read that they're reading recently, like some people might say, oh, I, I don't even know the last book I downloaded, but on my nightstand is blah, blah, blah. Or, oh, I, I downloaded this book and I, I just finished it. and It was amazing. It doesn't really matter. It's more that she can get to know who they are authentically. Are you getting a trend here? And then the other question that she gave is, what's your favorite song of all time and why? That one would be hard for me. I like a lot of songs. Probably would depend on the mood. But again, just it's not about the song so much, whether she likes it or doesn't like the song, but the why part, it gets to kind of cuts to the heart of who you are with a very practical, specific question. OK, moving on. We have my friend Jill Sanderson. Love Jill. She Jill's episode eight. Very popular podcast. Jill is uh, formerly of Dude Solutions and now of Fidelity. She's an Agile coach management. I'm actually, I don't know her current title, but she's worked with Scrum Masters and Agile teams for a long time. So she actually gives you a specific question about that. The first question that Jill recommends is, what have you learned in the last week or two? So Jill's saying, hey, if you're not constantly learning, you're probably not someone who's going to fit well on my team. I love that question. I think that if you can't answer that easily, that's okay. I encourage you to become someone who can. And remember, you could have, you could be upgrading a skill. It doesn't mean you need to acquire, oh, this skill, that skill. It's just really getting to the heart of, are you learning and growing as a person? And what's a current example of that? The other question that Jill says, is which of the ceremonies on Scrum do you see the most value in? And so if you are applying for a job as a Scrum Master and you're interviewing for that, you're going to want to have an opinion on the work that's being done. And I think you can pretty much extrapolate that into development and design. What is a specific aspect of that that you really care about, see value in, and how do you describe it? I think it speaks to the passion that you have for what you're doing and goes a level deeper than just getting to know who you are, but really getting to know who you are in terms of the work that you're doing. And so that's Jill Sanderson, episode eight. And now we're going to kind of shift gears to Colleen Klausner, episode 16. Colleen is a technical recruiter, and I think that these are great questions. You're going to see they're much more transactional in nature, but I want to speak to you about why that is. And yes, Colleen is a technical recruiter, but it's funny. She's a very warm and kind, generous person. You're going to be able to develop a relationship with her. So she's not a transactional person, but let me tell you what her questions are and why I think they're a little bit more poignant. The first question is, what is your timeline? So she's talking to you about a job. What is your timeline? <laughs> I talk to my students about this all the time. You'd think that's a straightforward question. It's not always. I'm thinking of one specific student and a March 31st deadline that we want to look at what your specific timeline is. That shows, Colleen, that you are serious about this and that you've thought about when is a good time to make a move for you. The second question she asks is not all that different. It's are you looking to make a change? And some of you are thinking, of course, they're looking to make a change because they're contacting her. But no, that's not necessarily true. Sometimes we can get a little bored at our day to day. We can get a little bit the humdrum of life gets to us and we want to just explore what else is out there. Otherwise, come on. Why do we have Realtor.com that we're just looking at houses, even if we're not serious of moving? Why do we have Airbnb? We flip through houses or vacation homes, even though we're not necessarily serious. Same thing with clothes, whatever. Also, you may not be looking to make a change, but what if your dream company has an opening? And that may be, you can say, well, I'm not looking to make a change, but I would change for this company. That's just true for me. So Colleen's questions make me think of Shark Tank, one of my favorite shows that I can't watch late at night because I can't sleep, like watching a basketball game. 
<laughs> I just love it. I think it's so cool. And Shark Barbara Corcoran has a question that she asks. Now, you should know that Barbara made her money in New York as a, a realtor and a CEO for a real estate company. So transacting many multiple millions of dollars over real estate, she was just, she had an amazing skill at this. And so that's Barbara's perspective. And Barbara's question is, by when? Her question is, by when? You might say, by when what? Well, by when do you want to close on your house? Really, the by when drives a lot of it, right? I mean, if you think about, and real estate's a great example, if you think about by when, do you, by when do you want to sell? Oh, you want to sell in, in two weeks? Okay, price will be a factor. What we're going to upgrade or change will be a factor. You want a year? Okay, then that'll be a different timeline. Let, maybe let's do those things. However, Barbara is looking for that person who is ready now. She wants to develop relationships with people who are maybe thinking about it down the road, but she is prioritizing those people who answer the question by when first. And so when Colleen is asking that as a technical recruiter, it's her job to really find out who's serious and how serious and can she get this person in a job for this company that she's working with. And so that's the lens and the filter. Some of you listening are a little bit more flexible with your timeline. It's okay. It's okay. You're listening. You're preparing. You're deciding. Are you committed? You're doing the work. But some of you think that you're ready in a month, but you're not really ready. And some of you say, well, when I get my portfolio done, when I get my portfolio done, when I get my portfolio done. Now, I encourage you to complete a portfolio. I think it's a great strategy. However, I have seen many students hide behind that while other students got hired before their portfolio was ready and actually before their LinkedIn profile was really very good and they got hired for more money. And so you might be saying, well, how does that happen? How, because there's a commitment to I'm getting hired no matter what. I'm going to keep working on my portfolio. I'm going to keep working on my LinkedIn. I'm, I'm doing those things that need to happen. But those are not boxes that need to be checked for me to get hired. I'm getting hired. I'm getting hired next month. I'm getting hired in three months, whatever it is. I really want you to think about solidifying your timeline. Now, for those of you who are like, yeah, but what if I say March 31st and then it's April 1st and I failed? Here's what I say to that. You didn't fail. You're way further ahead than if you had no date. And you just recalibrate to say, okay, I still need, oh, it looks like I need to do these three things. Okay, now we're going to do it for April 30th. And so this timeline aspect, when you're really serious, there's like no stress and pressure and vibrational challenges in your body. You don't feel that like, oh, what's the date? You just feel like, yeah, yeah, I'm working. I'm working towards March 31st. Yeah. Okay. Okay. I'm working. I'm working. Okay. And then you start to see that your lens of focus, which you actually, the activities that you're doing are all centered around that timeline. And you don't have time for all the other junk. You don't have time to do that other junk. And it reminds me of when like my favorite thing to talk about, because my sister once complimented me and said that she quotes me on this. And so I love to repeat it, is that when <laughs> this was years ago when we had the meetup and we did live workshops, is that if you were having trouble getting stuff done, what two things can you get done before 10 a.m.? Do those first. Before the laundry, before preparing, for cleaning up, blah, blah, blah. Do those first. That's going to be more impactful. We often think, oh, I'm just going to do all these little things first. And that's what distracts us. We need to do the big things first. It hurts a little bit. But if you put those big things first, so if you do one thing on your portfolio and one thing on your community building every day before 10 a.m., you do that then everything else is just gravy and kind of works with that. So think about that timeline question. I think it's a really important one. It seems simple on its face, but I, I see students struggle with that a lot. Okay. Tiffany Reese is a UX lead. So I love that she gives us, she's a specific um, UX person and, and here are her questions. So she's episode 69 of the podcast. Her first question is, what is a favorite project that you've worked on? Love that one because it shows it tells her, hey, are you going to like the projects that we have? So that's a really great one, I think. And it's a generous one, too. Another question that she asks is, how do you deal with a difficult stakeholder? Oh, love that one. 
And I always tell my students, if you think that in UX design, you just create these amazing designs and then you turn them over to the developer and then, oh my gosh, there they are. And they are created exactly as you said it. Everything is perfect. And that never happens. <laughs> so there's always a stakeholder. There's always a difficult stakeholder. And I think that just knowing how to deal with that situation is definitely a great indicator that you're going to be a great UX designer, really a great team member on any on any team, but in our case, in technical teams. All right. Are you guys getting a ton of value out of these? Aren't these so good? I know. I love them. I love them. Love them. My guests are really, they're bringing you a ton of insight into how to prepare and what questions really are valuable. All right. The next one is from Lori Etheridge. She is the CEO of Amor Ver, one of our sponsors for our giveaway. Love you, Lori. Thank you. She was episode 65 of the podcast. Lori has done many amazing things. So she's interviewed a ton of great people. And one of the things I'll tell you about Lori when she talks about her team, she is always so generous in the way that she talks about people that she is managing. She's so kind and talks about how amazing they are. And I think that anybody would be, would love to work for Lori. So plug for Lori on that. Okay. Episode 65. Lori says, what has been your hardest day on a job? I've never heard that question. I think that's really good. What was your hardest day? What did it compose of? What was really challenging for you? What is hard to you? A lot of times we think hard is the same thing for all of us. I assure you it is not. Hard for one of us is is easy for another. And so I love that question. It really speaks to what makes a day hard for you. And then she can see, like, am I someone who can are we going to have a lot of days like that at Amorver? Or am I someone who can help you guard against that? The other question that Lori mentioned, so that's kind of a past question. The next one is a is kind of a future seeking one, which is what will you do in your first month on the job? Knowing that you're someone who has thought about that and looked at the results. And even if I bet, even if you weren't spot on with everything you said, if you had a vision for how you could execute that job, That would be a great place for you to be in. So I think that's a great question too. What will you do in your first month on the job? Okay, we have one more guest we're going to talk about. I have a ton more questions and I'm thinking about putting together a book on this. I got to be honest. I think you guys really love these secret web and interview questions and just having like a practice and a workbook. So I'd really love it if you drop me a line in our Facebook group, facebook.com slash groups slash you are techie, all spelled out, Y-O-U-A-R-E-T-E-C-H. And let me know, are you loving these? Are these really helpful to you? We could do even more secret weapon interview questions and get some more insights. I think the the brilliant thing is that these are from a, a diversity of people in the tech industry who are hiring people like you every day. So I'd love to hear what you think. Okay. Final questions that I'm going to go over today are by one of my, I love, all, aren't my all my podcast guests my favorite, but one of my favorite podcast guests, Pamela Culpepper, episode 77. Pamela is a founder of a diversity consultancy called Have Her Back, really focusing on gender equity in the really overall compensation and great place for tech, the tech space to be. But Pamela, before this, she really has worked in all levels of HR, the very top levels. So she has interviewed, I don't know, I think in the episode she mentions maybe hundreds of people, maybe thousands. I also love Pamela because she shows you how to show up confidently. She's a great example of how to be your own cheerleader. So you might want to check out that episode if you're looking for a little confidence boost. Her confidence, I tend to be kind of big and bold and um, high energy. And Pamela's confidence is really more, I wouldn't call it subtle, but it's a little bit reserved. Her confidence is a a bit reserved in terms of her delivery, but maybe even rooted more deeply in confidence. So I think she's a great example of this. And I think her questions you're going to find really valuable. So let's take a look at those. Pamela asks, what have you done in the last year that was completely unusual for you? Ooh, what have you done? In the last year, that was completely unusual for you. I think that's a great question that talks about growing, developing, being someone who's willing to risk and try things. And I'm finding that actually really hard to answer. I need to think about that one. I feel like I've done a lot. That was unusual for you. I mean, I had a baby, but that's not really that unusual for me. So (laughs) I think I need to come up with another one. I probably would be not saying something when I wanted to. That would be unusual for me. But great question. How how would you answer that? 
And then the other question she says is, what do you think is important for me to know about you that I haven't asked? Now, that one I heard multiple times as well. What do you think is important for me to know about you that I haven't asked? I can tell you there are a lot of right answers. I'm going to tell you the wrong answer for that one. Oh, nothing. You've asked a ton of great questions. No. Wrong. Even if you've been asked 100 questions, find one thing. What I would say is go back to that secret sauce, go back to what makes you authentically you, and think about your dream job description. Like what is ideal in your dream job and how could you bring that authentic you to that place and answer it from that space? What is important for me to know about you that I haven't asked? Let them know what they should ask you. Oh, you should ask me what my favorite hobby is because I am a skydiver. You should ask me about how I first started off and what types of managers didn't work well for me. Whatever is true for you, you should ask me about what I'm excited to learn this year because I'm someone who's really focused on growth and and look at all the ways that I'm learning and growing. So a lot of great answers, but if you are thinking about these types of questions in your interview prep, In a not stressful way, you don't have to go over every single one of these. Did one or two or three of them jump out to you as being very important that maybe you felt a little nervous when I read them? You were like, ooh, you know, like that one I just read from Pamela, what was unusual for you? That one I'm like, ooh, I think that's hard for me to answer. That's what you should spend your time on. So kind of going back to my own personal nerves, because I feel like maybe I'm not the only human in the world who has this. Reviewing and memorizing lines of code until the last minute when you need to leave for an interview, not a good strategy. Reviewing Figma functionality, not a good strategy. I understand that you are going to want to be someone who shows up as a technically capable person. The way to do that is to work on your technical skills every day. Just practice them every day. That's a much more effective strategy. And to prepare for your interview, Focus on some of these things that felt uncomfortable for you. The ones that didn't feel uncomfortable for you are going to be really easy for you to answer in the interview. So don't worry about that. Of the ones I listed, which two or three felt really uncomfortable for you? Spend some time in that uncomfortable place so that if one of these amazing people interviews you, you will have a fantastic response. I hope this was helpful to you today. Please let me know. If you really love this, go to facebook.com slash group slash you are techie and let me know if this was helpful to you and if you would like more of this. I plan to keep asking my guests this question so you can check out any of our podcast guest episodes, especially the ones that I named here. Listen to them, really prepare for your interview. I'm so grateful that you stopped by today. I know you're going to crush your interview. Thank you for being with me. I'll see you next time. Hey, if you enjoyed listening to this podcast, you have to sign up for the UR Techie email list. Imagine being in the tech job of your dreams. Join me to get the strategies, training, and never ending support to get hired. Sign up at URTechie.com. That's Y O U A R E T E C H Y.com. I'll see you next time.